All right. Well, welcome. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is our first podcast that we're putting on. We have Reggie with us from the transportation division, and we have Lee from the math area and Vera from health sciences. They've also been, they've, all three of them have been using Ultra since spring A session. So welcome you guys. Thank you for being here and taking the time to answer some questions for us. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and get started with the first question. What has been your biggest struggles with switching to Ultra? As we, we all know that Ultra is going to be hard and not very fun at times. So please share with us what your biggest struggles have been. Uh, yeah, this is Ridge. I, I, I'll start off uh, one of my biggest struggles because I'm actually incorporating a new textbook along with Ultra. So uh, as far as putting in the information, it wasn't. I would say difficult, but something about uh, uploading my test banks and stuff like that, I had a had a struggle with getting my, t- my my test banks and stuff in. So I had to reach out to Brian, and Brian helps me. He he really helped me out. He's a he's a whiz at this. So if you if you need anything to be fixed, that's the man to go to. That's true. Um, yeah, I think for me, uh, the grade book was a bit difficult. Um, and I, I sat down and wrote my answers out a couple weeks ago. But um, actually, I think today I was looking over the new updates. And some of the grade book frustrations uh, Blackboard, I think, has addressed in the newest update. Um, so hopefully that'll make our life easier in the fall. Um, I think the hardest thing is that instead of having a new category button, you have to hover between two categories and get a plus sign. And the plus sign is for addition. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know the hover right there, you will spend a whole lot and of time. And the plus the sign doesn't come up, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all about the plus sign in Ultra, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Everything. If you want to add anything, it's the plus sign. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my biggest struggle was um, just rearranging everything. I mean, so the conversion depends on what you converted from. So if you... Mm-hmm. If you converted from learn to ultra, then, you know, it wasn't like you lost anything, but it didn't, you know, if you weren't super organized in your learn course, then you also weren't super organized in your ultra course. And so it, um, so the good news is it forced you to be organized, which is wonderful. Um, but it did take a little bit of time. So you just have to kind of, you know, you kind of have to decide what your organization method is going to be and then, you know, kind of move your stuff around. Um, and I think for me, that was the the hardest part is kind of figuring that out, what I wanted to do. Yes. Yep. I, it's kind of like clearing out your closet. You have to take everything out of it uh-huh. to be able to kind of okay. put it away nice uh-huh. and organized. And then decide what you can't wear anymore. Never going to fit you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So when you guys had questions or struggles, what has been your favorite go-to resources to find answers or get help? So we can't say Brian, right? Because, because everybody (laughs) then will like call him and then that, then he'll quit because he'll be inundated. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just say the whole team, the CTL team has been phenomenal. I mean, I, I, I know you guys are busy, like you have like real jobs Mm -hmm. on top of, you know, all the other problems that we have, but I don't think I've ever sent a team's message to the group that someone hasn't gotten back to me pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not sometimes in the beginning, we didn't necessarily know the answers exactly. Um, but everybody's been wonderful about just kind of working things through. Thank you for the compliment. Yes, I can can agree to that too. Uh, The whole team has been awesome. I know, it's like I said, this is new to me. As soon as I got used to, well, getting used to uh, learn, then we had to go to office, so I'm like, oh my God. So, and then I had the new textbook I had to implement, and they had the, I forget what it was called when you got to bring your own stuff to them and they would help you kind of 
kind of put together. I forget what, what the name is. The Makerspace? The Makerspace. Yes, yeah. yes the uh, Makerspace. So just so happened, I'm like, well, there's a good time to go ahead and see if they're going to help me out. And didn't have no problem. Uh, that's when I was give the okay to go ahead and implement the ultra because at one time they were still wanting to go ahead go ahead and try to do the learn and then wait to fall to do the ultra but after uh figuring out i had this new textbooks and all of that it was like you know what let's go ahead and get you started you learn <laughs> but like like i say just the uh just uh just to help you know, showing me what I need to do and how to do it. It was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And I, I think the makerspace is going to be around in the fall. We might, I think there's been talk about rebranding it, but mm -hmm. I think that was a great resource. Um, and then I know, uh, I looked over the playlist we were working on, um, to help instructors out and a lot of like, I think Brian complained about how some of the videos weren't two minutes or less so he couldn't watch them but some of them are i think almost all of them are four minutes or less so if you watch them at double speed you can still knock them all out in two minutes <laughs> if you're if you have short short attention spans yeah or yeah you just like kind of zip through it and move the thing over yeah move the bar okay. yeah short short videos are good but as long as it gets to the point of what we need to know i think that that's good even even four minutes, I think, is doable. <laughs> yep. And um, how have your students responded to the switch? I had some, uh, some real good uh, feedback. So a lot of my students are saying it seems to be where it's a little easier to navigate through it, through the, uh, the course for us to outline define what they need to do for that week. Uh, and I'm also noticing compared to the learn, I noticed a lot of, uh, use as far as, uh, messaging or texting me through it. So I thought that was kind of, thought that was kind of good because usually they would email me if something was going on or if they was going to be out. But now I noticed that they do use the all true parts of the messaging, uh, when they want to reach out to me. So I thought that was pretty good. So it seems like it's working out pretty good for my students. That's great. You know, that organization thing that I talked about that I didn't like doing, um, it turned out that worked for the students. <laughs> there was uh, some initial like whining, like this is different, you know, different is bad. Um, but once they realized that like all the information was in all of those modules and like kind of mm -hmm. organized, um, then they really, really liked it. And yes. yeah, I, I got a lot of positive feedback after the first like initial week of what is this and why would we change? Mm -hmm. Can I ask what kind of organization you had, uh, in your learn versions of the courses? So I had, I had folders, but maybe I didn't put everything in the folder where it needed to be. Like if I added a test or something, I maybe wasn't super good about putting it in the right week. I might just like throw it down at the bottom and, you know, turn mm -hmm. it on and tell them where to find it. Um, but this kind of forces you to kind of think in chunks instead of you know, just kind of like randomly having things in your course for the students to kind of find um, a little bit like hide and seek. You know, I, she she assigned test 3.2 it's got to be here somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I, I think they um, not think I know that they really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Lee, what about your students? Yeah, I think the the integration was really smooth. Um, I, I was teaching a gateway class that had a co-rec with it. So the two courses were paired and I was using ultra and the uh, co-rec teacher was not. So he was nervous about navigation concerns. Students are completely fine. Um, and he even had to like, he, he, he stepped in a few times to like click around and he had no trouble without any sort of instruction, how to find stuff in my course. So I think that's a really good testimony. Uh, my big pro tip to anybody listening, navigate around ultra in class. 
it was always one of my big pieces of advice for learn as well. Like in class, pull up Blackboard, click click around and show students where stuff is. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's an asynchronous course, do a welcome video, mm -hmm. click around in your course and show students where stuff is. It really makes your life easier in the long run. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Then you don't get those emails and, you know, messages like I can't find X or Y or Z. Yeah, no, that's great. That's a great tip. Mm -hmm. Great tip. Um, what have been your favorite aspects in using Ultra? That's that turns out to be different from the Learn version. I think one of my favorites is you're able to make the make the course your own. I guess you can kind of say it that way. Like in each modular modular, you can put. Like, say, you put some pictures or showing, all right, for module one, it's going to be disassembling engine. You know? So I've got a picture of an engine that's disassembled, you know. So they kind of kind of try to grasp the student's uh, attention to click on that module, you know, so they can see what's going on and this is, what's, this is what we're doing. And so <clears throat> that's, that's, that's what I liked about it because everybody was like, man, this is awesome. I see we got this or this module, next module look like we got tires or whatever. So it looks like it's grasping their attention to pull them into to go ahead, go ahead and check it out. But I have to try to have to try to keep it cut off because if you don't keep it where the students can't stay out of it, they might be in week eight and we need to be in week uh week week one. So yeah. that's that's another thing you can kind of to, you can kind of control what 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 they can look at, and what they can't look at, so they don't kind of stray off course. Because you want to try to keep them focused for that one week. But so that's that's some of the things that I like. I think it's I think it's real nice that you got the control and you can kind of make it your own. Uh, yeah the the way you can do uh, release conditions and ultra. It's just so much. I know. I know. I could do it and learn. I was never good at it. It's just so much more intuitive that it's right there in front of you. You can just click on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way that it sets up the course entry assignment, it makes record keeping so much e easier for faculty. Um, when Sherilyn was our department chair, she said that the math department was the best department at the college, except when it comes to attendance. Um, and so, the way that it automatically does the course entry assignment. They can't access anything before they knock it out. It makes record keeping so much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wrote down that LTI seems to be working a little bit better. And I think that has to do with something we've done in house, but still, I appreciate it that, uh, so LTI is the tool we use to connect the outside stuff. Um, and it's, it's worked, it's worked better with learn with, with ultra that I did with learn. Well, one of the reasons or switching to to ultra is third party isn't going to be supporting uh, the connection to, between uh, Blackboard Learn and their their service. So that's one of the reasons why we were really excited to be able to move to ultra so that we could keep that connection good for you guys. So yeah. So um, I like Reggie may or may not have spent more time deciding which pictures are going to go with which modules and what was in the mod no. <laughs> <laughs> um my favorite aspect and this is and this is a crazy thing and it's just one of those things about learn that drove me insane um in learn it was very hard to get rid of a, a assessment like if you decided not to give a test or you you know you wanted to move things around or it was just practically impossible and you ended up just hiding it from yourself <laughs> and hoping that it wasn't in your grade calculation it just it drove me insane um and in ultra you just like click and you delete it or you move mm -hmm. it around and you can put it in order and that that's very good for me because now i can i can see where things are and i know that you know i've given all my tests and i everything's connected and and when you um, make a test it makes its own little category in your grade book and when you delete mm -hmm. a test it deletes out of your grade book so it's just that like several steps that you had to do before that you don't have to do now 
So I like that. I think it's cool. Yep. That's great. Is there other stuff you guys want to let people know before we get to the, the last question? Definitely, this is your time to to talk campus wide about about Ultra. So please let them know anything and everything you want to know. <laughs> what is what is the last question? <laughs> the, the last <laughs> the last question is: What would be your best piece of of advice? for those that will be starting to use Ultra in the fall? Okay. Uh -huh. So my best piece of advice is that organization thing that I wasn't good at. Um, organize what you want to bring and then make your modules to bring them into. And don't just dump everything that you used to have into your Ultra course to have to sort through. Like, go in, pare it down, figure out what you want to do. That test that you gave 10 years ago that you just hung on to, it you won't lose it. You can put it someplace, but it really doesn't need to, because it just messes up your grade book, right? Then you've got all mm -hmm. these tests in your grade book that you have to get rid of. It's just messy. So get, you know, pare down, fix it all up, and then move your stuff across. And it's a lot less time to have to, you know, to put things the, where they need to be. Yes. That's my pro tip. Yeah. So, so take, it, take it back off of her. Uh, is it Dickie? Vera, but it's fine. Vera, you can call Vera. me Dickie. I actually oh. like that name better. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> take it back off of uh, Vera. So exactly what, 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 what she's saying, don't try to incorporate all that stuff at one time. Or you're going to be, you're going to have a headache trying to get all that stuff situated. But once you do get it organized, I would say most definitely use the uh, student view so you can actually see from the student's eyes on how your course and stuff yeah, is stuff. That's a good idea. And it will help you to improve or if you have to do any updates because I, I didn't even use it. I didn't, I, I didn't know to use it until I started teaching and one of my students said, I can't see this or can't see that. I'm like, I'm, I don't know where you don't see it. And then until he said, well, you know, you can go right here. I even had a student that was like, well, you can go right here. Look at student view. And, <laughs> Your and, student it, and it, it, it does. <laughs> it does really help out. Uh, so you can go in up on the student's view and just kind of view your course and you can see how everything looks in the student's eyes. And that way you can make it a whole lot pleasurable for them and make it a little easier. So use that student view. And it, it, it will help you out. Plus it makes you look like you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you're if you're brand new, the first time you touch Ultra, take the time to watch a navigation video or two. We definitely have it in the training material. Uh, mm -hmm. I think once you watch a navigation video or two, you'll get your head around. This is how we're laying things out here. Um, the side they need that was in Lauren is going away, but everything will still fit. Um, so take time for navigation. Uh, be willing to ask questions. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be called Maker's Fair, but some version of that, I'm sure it's going to be available in the fall. Um, or just you know, reach out to people. Uh, ask questions. Give yourself grace. Be patient. Um, and when it comes to, you know, in the classroom, take the time to navigate in front of your students. Click around. Pull it, you know, turn on the projector and pull up your Blackboard course and click and show them. This is the assignment you need to be working on. It sits right here. Make sure after class you go right here and you do this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to make your life a lot easier uh, in the long run. Um, and I have a little poem I wrote uh, in preparation for the podcast today I wanted to share. So um, I'm grateful for every moment of care, uh, the times I am noticed, the times I am heard. May I treat others as I dream to be treated. Thank you to those who take the time to listen. Oh, that's really good. That's Thanks. so cool. Right. Good. Um, so just from a, a from me from a personal aspect, um, I have met people in departments that I never would have met, and you know worked with people that I probably wouldn't have ever worked with. You know, normally, you know, I don't. I try not to get out of Bob Greenhall, um, but. <laughs> but that's been um, that's been really special for me. I'm relatively new to the college. I've only been here a little more than a year, 
So, you know, I'm the new kid on the block. So this is really, um, it's really introduced people to me and I appreciate that. There's a lot of great people in this college. Yes. Again, I think we all are, well, I don't know about Kelvin, but I think I'm also a new kid on the block. So just to support, if you have any kind of questions, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. It took me the longest to, you know, get up enough nerve, but you know, I need some help to start reaching out and, I'm telling you, they they really put in an effort to support their staff or anybody who's got questions or having any problems. They will help you through it. And once you start learning this stuff, it takes a whole lot of stress off. Of so yes, don't 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 hesitate to reach out to the uh, uh, CTLEs uh, for any kind of problems. And they're, especially when it comes to the ultra learning. Right. The comment that I heard from people that I that I trained um, numerous times is it's not as bad as I thought. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as I thought. You know, right. the fear of, you know, diving in is is angst provoking. But when you get there, it's probably not as bad as you thought. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for providing your thoughts and everything that you've learned along the way. Um, we're really excited for this transition in fall and anxious and willing to see what happens. And so thank you for sharing your insights. And I'm sure a lot of people will find it very interesting and thought provoking as they prepare for the fall. Well, thank you for joining us on this podcast. I thank hope you, you guys have a great break and um, mm-hmm. we'll see you guys in the fall. Same to you all. All right.